to Asen Manso where the slave market is and as you can see behind me we have ancestral graveyard this is at the ancestral graveyard when you look at the wall too you, you could see most of our ancestors on the wall the pictures have been painted on the wall and I'm seeing one person that is so interesting that uh, I would like to share a few Booker Booker T Washington Booker T Washington we believe he's a black man we are finally at Asen Manso Riverside or uh, Asimansu Slave Mausoleum, whatever. This is our tour guide in the person of Kwame Azuma. So I'm going to leave you in his hands. He will talk to you. Please do all the questioning. And then I will do all the examination. Quiet! But before we embark on this journey in the memories of the ancestors we've lost, we lost a lot of them. Walking from the hinterlands to get to this place from here to the dungeons, through the middle passage to the new world, lots of our ancestors died. A lot more died on the passage. They got to the plantations, so many of them died. I want us to take just one minute of our time to have a silent moment for them, and after the one minute silence, I will say may their souls rest in perfect peace, and we shall all respond by saying Ashe. So the Ashe is a Yoruba word that literally means so shall it be. It has been selected among the Pan-Africans as a word in place of Amen. Since the Amen word is actually a westernized word, we don't want to use it. So it's accepted among all the Pan-Africans. Everyone who is into Pan-Africanism accepts the Ashe. In turn, it might translate into be like the Enyoho. May the spirit of our lost ancestors rest in perfect peace. Ashe. Ago. An awareness of our past is essential to the establishment of our personalities and our identities as Africans. That's a quote from Emperor Haile Selassie. From Marcos Mezia Garvey Jr., actually borrowed by Bob Marley. Emancipate yourselves from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our minds. On this land, among the people of Benin, Togo, and Ghana, we have this common African proverb we stated Until the tales of the hunt is told by the lions, the hunts will always glorify the hunters. In many cases, all I'm trying to say today is that as Africans, we are struggling to tell our own narratives. We are struggling to tell our history, and it's not because we don't have them. We have absolutely everything it takes for us to tell our own history. But then systems tend to be fighting against our history being told. Do we even know how the ancestors suffered? Do we know the history? But then I bet we were taught about Queen Elizabeth back then in the days. The Sagranti War. And there's several others. But then we were not taught what the ancestors had to suffer before they were taken across oceans. Today is being placed in the curriculum. Let's learn them. Our ancestors after the wars never placed their victims of wars into chains and shackles. They gave them freedom. They inducted them into the cultures and they practiced one culture. But then of course, Nearer to the year 1400, they call it the exploration stages. The word Africa was derived from a Latin word, Africa. And that word means sunny. The Greek word, Afrik, spelled A-P-H-R-I-K-E. That word means a land without cold. Look at Africa. The sun is always up. We barely experience coldness. And that's exactly what they meant. But then many historians believe that the actual meaning of the word Africa is the children or the people of the sun. You see, as Africans, we are blessed with this skin. The melanin in us allows us to absorb the energy from the sun. For a couple of decades trading with us, nearer to the year 1500, that was yet. In the year 1492, 
The Europeans have now reached the West Indies, which is the Caribbean today. They went to the Americas. Massachusetts and its environs, they formed the New England, enslaved the natives of those land, used them on their plantations and their industries. But then they were not doing well. It was then that one of their people, called Bartolomeo de las Casas, a Spanish Portuguese Roman Catholic priest, came up with a suggestion that looking at the African men and women, they look strong, a lot more stronger than the natives of America. The best option is to go to Africa and get them. So they sailed across oceans to meet with Prince Henry and his people. I believe strongly that in transaction there should be a consent and an exchange. You accepted their deal. Give them your victims of wars. It doesn't matter if they are brothers or not. They are still Africans. So you gave them out, took the guns and gunpowders in return. They, shall, they have already paid you. So of course, you sold brothers and sisters. For a couple of decades, that was how it was. Their first source of slaves that were moved out of this land were based on the victims of wars. Now demand started growing to the higher scale. And that was when the Dutch, the Danish, the Spanish, the British, and the French sailed across oceans to this particular land in search of the same thing that the Portuguese were exporting out of the land. So they had to fight each other. For nearly 130 years, they've been fighting. In the year 1651, the British took over and they introduced raiding, kidnapping, ambushing, and burning homes, forcing families into chains and shackles. They had children, pregnant women, inclusive in the chains. With the men, they had to walk. For so many miles, they've been walking. We have a historian here in Ghana, Professor Akosia Adoma Pebi. In her book entitled The History of Indigenous Slavery in Ghana from the 15th century to the 19th century, she made us aware that many slave markets were used here in West Africa. So many facts stated in that book. She stated that from Benin to Gambia, Gold Coast Ghana had about 63 slave markets. We have Salaga, Sampa, Jenani, Ketekrache, Bonomanso, Techim, and Picoro. I say man so here at the dungeon at Cape Coast, Elmina, Fort Amsterdam, Fort Williams, all the way to the Christian World Dungeon in Osu, Accra. Southeast of Accra, you are heading into Volta region. Today we have Atoko, slave riverside. Right there, it was also a slave market where our ancestors were bid. These are very few of them. There was a British historian, his name W.E. Ward, Adam Crystal from Kingston, Jamaica. Samuel Carson from New York City, United States, and these are our unknown ancestors brought back from Barbados. In the year 1998, Ghana celebrated its ever emancipation celebration, the first one. It saw the return of bones of our ancestors. Crystal was a native. That's not her actual name. No one knows. She was captured and sent out of this land. So the, it was the Europeans who gave her this name, Crystal. They moved her to Jamaica. When they got to Jamaica, she wouldn't eat anything. Embarking on a hunger strike, she was caught in the act. They needed to force her to eat, so they used the chisel and hammer method. Her jaws were closed so tight, they broke their teeth. Took them out, placed the funnel, they dished the food into the funnel. With the help of water, they pushed it down the throat. That way she survived for them not to lose their money. She was a strong woman. Each time she is forced to eat, she waits quietly. After they have all left, she put her fingers in the throat and throws everything up, continued and died in the process. Oral history has it that her dying wish was to be brought back home. Centuries of preserving the bones, they flew it back in 1998, together with the bones of Samuel Carson. Carson was one of the very first group of African Americans to serve in the U.S. Navy. Died and wasn't given a befitting burial. Of course, Colonialism, yes, I understand. they colonized us. When did the Berlin Conference happen? Why did it happen? They want to divide you into pieces so they can control you. Fill the land. It doesn't matter how your nail is long. I don't want your socks. I want your feet. Connect with the ground. You see, 
Our diaspora brothers and sisters have been away for a very long time. Their ancestors were the ones who were taken away. We share the same DNAs with our ancestors. And that means when we walk with others, and still we do this, so you can understand the pain. Came here, our ancestors were never in shoes. They called them uncivilized people. Yes, that's exactly what they told them. Watch around, ask relevant questions. Okay, so let's go. Quietly, no okay. excitement. It was here that the ancestors actually had their last ever bath before they were sold. When they brought them here, they were in numbers. A lot of them, once younger, they grew from the places that the elders fell. There was a tree here that was 605 years old. Yes. We have the picture in the museum in uh, Legon. The professor took a picture of it and they are keeping it in the museum there. 605 years old and it fell in the year 1992. People who visited this place picked part of that particular plant until the entire time. The plant is called the silk cotton tree. Onina as we call it in the local Akan language or dialect. When the ancestors were brought here, there were quite a lot of them, just like we are here now. And according to this here, the river called Enonconsu, meaning the Smith's River. Pardon? Enonko. 
Ochi. Yes. Catch. The river flows very fast, and so the people never allowed our ancestors into that side of the river. They were scared they would lose their commodities, so they restricted them from going to Ochi. Um, yeah, it is very important to visit our slave side. Why? Because um, to, 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 know, to know our ancestors, where they are coming from, where they, where they started from and where they reached, and how things went those days. How things went those days. And to study our cultural heritage, not only in Ghana, but in, also in Africa, the whole of Africa. Okay, so I believe it is important to study it because, you know, one, our ancestors did a lot for this country. They sacrificed very well for us in this country. I believe each and every person in this world has to know your heritage. You have to know where you come from. You have to know what you are about. So studying this thing is more or less like one of the most important things each and every human being needs. And as an African, what happens to my forefathers and whatsoever, or what happened to our past generations are one of the key things we need to put into consideration so we know how to move forward then. Okay, so it is important to visit this tourist sites because you get to know the uniqueness of Africa, you get to know your identity and you get to know all of the things that when it comes to history, what you came to hear importantly when it comes to oral tradition and, and this written one, you get to see some of the structures that communicate our history and I think there's a beautiful place you would have to uh, visit. Let's TV, see my leg, let us see. Go and subscribe to Let's Film TV. Now! My name is Akuma Mamazimbi. Keep watching Less Home TV because you are number uno. <laughs> Ajima Badunye, aka Kwajuni Kanika, Blasters footballer. I am on Lex Films TV. I am on number one. Lex Film GH. Lex Lex Films TV. What does it? Lex Films TV. Lex Films TV. Lex Films TV. Just go to my YouTube, then subscribe, then 